The next thing we're going to do is start adding what's called camera effects. Now, they're based on the Matchbox tool, but also with the Stingray technology, the game engine technology. And you apply these directly to your camera, which then affects the entire scene. So I've got my camera here. In fact, I'm going to pan over. Let's give ourselves a little room because we're going to add a couple different camera effects to finish off the end result of our action. I'll go back to my node bin. We're still looking at our matchbox. My camera is selected. I'll hit the S key to look at all the matchbox tools that start with S. And you'll see Stingray Ambient Inclusion, Stingray Motion Blur, Stingray Reflection, Stingray Lens Blurs, Stingray Bloom. And then there's also the Depth of Field. I'll just double click on the Depth of Field and you'll see that that camera effect, the matchbox tool, has been applied to the camera. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see what we got here. I'll double click on the Stingray Depth of Field tool. And in this viewport, let's hit the Fit button to resize my scene into this viewer. I'll make sure I've got my Stingray Depth of Field selected. And down in its parameters, there's an option called Viewing. As soon as I turn on Viewing, you're going to see a color representation of the Z depth based on the settings for our fall off. As far as the far max, the far distance, near max, and near distance. These all come with preset parameters set to 1 for the far max, 1000 for far distance, 1 for near max, and 1000 for near distance. And then over to the left of that, we have our focus. And we have the center part where you see the X, the Y, and the Z. As I start to adjust the Z or the Z position for the center, you're going to notice they're changing what elements are going to be blurred based on the Z position center. And this is because we've made those position changes for each layer in 3D space. I'm going to set my Z position for the center to about 500. In fact, once again, let's just enter the exact value. Now I want to start adjusting my fall off, but I'm going to turn the viewing off because I want to see the actual result as it's taken place and I make these adjustments. If I start increasing the far max and decreasing it, we can see the end result of the depth of field. I'm going to set this approximately 2.20. For my near max, let me start increasing that. Again, just keeping an eye on the viewport while making the adjustment. I'm going to take this up pretty high. We're going to go to approximately seven for the value for my near max. Now if I select my Stingray node and I hit the H key to hide it and unhide it, we can see the effect of the depth of field. And because it's a camera effects, a matchbox tool applied to the camera, it affects the entire scene. Now I want to continue adding more camera effects to my camera, so make sure it's selected. Go back to my node bin, hit the S key once again, and find the Stingray Bloom. And I'll just drag it into the schematic and automatically it will connect it because the camera was selected. Double click on my Stingray Bloom to access its parameters. Just like the depth of field tool, the Bloom comes with preset values already ready for you. But I want to make some adjustments to this. I'm going to take the threshold and bring it down to about 25, 0.25 I should say. I'll start to increase the exposure. We're trying to just bloom that background a little bit. So I'll take this up to about 1.20. The blur is set by 20 by default, but let's take that even a little more. I'm going to set that to 23 for my blur. And you can control the color of the bloom if you wanted to. And we also have a gain setting. I'm going to decrease the gain just to bring it down a little bit. Somewhere around 0 0.60, 0 0.59. Either one of those will work, I think, nicely. Again, we can take our Bloom tool, hit the H key, and you can see the effect that's taken place based on this camera effect. Now let's add a color correction camera effect. So I select my camera once again. Let me move my other camera effects off to the side. Again, make sure my camera is selected. Go to my node bin, and I'll hit the C key because we want to apply a color correction tool. But we want to select and apply the color correct 3D selective. So I drag that out, and that's now added and attached to our camera. I'll double click on it to get its parameters, and you'll notice it looks very familiar or similar to the color correction tool that we used before. But the power of this one is the 3D selective ability that you have with it. So instead of looking at the master controls, I'll click on it where it reads master for the flyout and choose selective. 
Now under type, by default it reads none, but if I expand this out, you're gonna see all the different type of selectives you have based on the 3D space that you're working on and the objects that you have inside of your scene. I'm gonna choose the depth type and then once again, turn on the selective viewing option to see a representation as to what is going to be affected by this color correction. Coming over to control one, I'm gonna go down to the range slider, which is by default is set at 500, and that's why these elements in 3D space are being highlighted and affected. But if I start to make the adjustments to this, you'll see as I drag, we're going to increase or decrease what elements in 3D space, based on their positioning, will be affected by this color correction. I'll set the range for control one to be 750. So now we can see the two rocks in front will be affected and this rock behind that further back in Z will be affected but not as much. And then down below the selective viewing you see the softness where we can start to feather and soften the selection based on this setting. So let's set this to about 18 to soften up the edge of the elements that will be affected by this color correction. Now let's disable selective viewing and let's go back where it reads selective and look at the master again. Going down to the master contrast for this tool, we're gonna to make a slight adjustment to the first parameter for the master control. I'm just going to increase it to about 106. Let me actually enter that directly in there. So this adjustment will affect these two rocks in front more than the one behind it, but it still is affecting that one. I wanna add one more color correct 3D selective camera effect. So make sure my camera is selected, go back to my node bin, and again, I have my color correct 3D selective tool. I will drag it out into the schematic and it will automatically connect it. Let's double click on that tool to get to its parameters and immediately I'm going to go to the selective. For my type for this selective, let's choose sphere world. What I'm trying to do is add more color correction to the blooming effect that has taken place. Let's turn on selective viewing so we can see what is being affected based on our parameters for controls one and controls two. So we wanna select that area back by the bloom and this obviously is not what we want. So we need to make some adjustments to this. If you remember in our viewport, we have icons off. So let me turn the icons back on for a second. And now when I turn the icon option for control one, you'll see that you get an actual manipulator for your X, your Y, and your Z position directly in the viewport. I actually want my icon option set to selected, so only this manipulator will be visible inside the view. So now I can start to adjust the Y, the X, the Z with the manipulator but I know what the values should be to select this area back here. So for the X, I'm gonna enter 525. For my Y, it's gonna be 307. And then for my Z, I want it to be a negative, so I choose minus 671. And now my selective type, the sphere world, is in the position I want it to be, but I wanna make some more adjustments to soften and change the shape of it. So under controls two, you get your sphere gain, your radius, your aspect for the Y, the Z, and also the fall off. I'll leave sphere gain at 100. I'll take my radius down just a little bit, maybe about 465. For the Y aspect, I'm gonna drag it way down to crunch it down. I'll enter a value of 35 for the sphere Y aspect. I'll leave the Z aspect alone, that's fine. But for my fall off, I want this to be a really high number. I'll set it to be 1000. Then underneath selective viewing, we have the softness slider. And as I start to increase this, we'll see we can soften the edge of our selected area. Let's bring this to 60. So now only this area in our 3D scene is going to be affected by the color correction based on these parameters. Let's turn off selective viewing and let's go back to master. I'll take our master gamma, the one on the left and increase it. I want to get to, again, keeping an eye in the viewport, making the adjustment. Let's see if we can get to, I like that, 1.50. That's given a nice effect. And then again, if we take that tool and I hit the H key on and off, we can see the effect inside the viewport. Make sure it is not hidden when you're done toggling back and forth. 
Now I want to do an overall color correction based on a Matchbox camera effect. So I'm just going to, again, just move these around and organize them a little bit. Select my camera, go back to my node bin. I'm looking at the Matchbox. Hit the C key. And this time we're just going to take our good old color correct and bring that into the scene. I'll double click on it. We've used this tool many times already, so you're somewhat familiar with it, I'm sure. And in this case, we're gonna to go to our master gain once again and just decrease to darken the entire scene a little bit. I'll set it to be about 65. And then for our saturation, I'm gonna to start to decrease that. Let's bring that down to about 75. All right, it's getting a little dark, so let's do this. Let's compensate that by going to our master offset and I'll increase the first slider, the master slider. Look at in the viewport. In fact, I'll enter 0 0.035 exactly to get the number that I want. And then selecting the last color correction we just applied, we can toggle it on and off to see the end result. And the last thing we want to do is do an equal blur of everything. So with my camera selected, again, I can move these around to give me some more room, but make sure the camera is selected. Go to your node bin. Make sure you're looking in your matchbox bin, and you'll see there's your blur tool. Just drag it in. It's automatically connected. Double click on the node to get to the parameter. I'm going to disable the Gaussian option. And for the amount, let's just increase this. About 550. That well, looks pretty good. Again, you can turn the tool on and off with the H key to see the subtle effect, but that's I like that. That works good. So now all of these different adjustments, whether it's been to a camera effect or a matchbox or the positioning in 3D space, some of the adjustments might seem very subtle, but when you combine them together, we end up getting the background that we want to use in our final comp. So this is our action setup. We are done with this. I'll hit the escape key to step back out into our schematic. And let me zoom out a little bit so we can see, to see where we're at. Let's save all the work that we've been doing here. So I'll come down to the save option. We wanna save our desktop to the current library. So I click save, I say yes, replace the existing one. It's going to override it with all the work that we've done. And then I can come to the flame flyout and choose save project to save our project at the state. Now with my schematic selected, I'll click the fit button and that's going to end this video. In the next video, we'll start compositing our talent over our new background and continue working on our comp.